Hello everyone, welcome yet again back to the Jubilee Model Railway for another local review. Now, I have never had this manufacturer, it's new to the layout, which as you can see here is real track models. I think these are a relatively uh, new company because they've only actually brought out uh, these Pacer units. Um, I think they do it in Northern uh, livery, uh, first Great Western, and two types of this Arriva unit. One named, which is uh, Tom Jones, and we have this one here, which is not named. Uh, the only reason why I went for this one is because the, it's the only one I had left. I really wanted to have one. So in this video, as usual, have a good look at the uh, model, the two cars here, see how it runs and any other features this uh, model may have. So, the first bit is to just have a look at the end of the box and see what it says. Here we go, real track models. I know I'm uh, Welsh, but I'm not even going to try and say that first word. A Reeve Cymru. There you go, it's a class 143 Arriva Trains Wales, which I go on these quite often down where I live. That's why I wanted to get one. So let's get into the box. So putting it here. Yeah, it comes out. It's too um oh they're a bit difficult to get out. Ah there we go. We got um one there. Oh something's just dropped out of there that one. Put that over to one side. And then you bring the other car out. We just put that to one side as well. And in the bottom of the box here, we have, as usual, this uh, paper giving you instructions, I would think. Let's see if we just open it up. Oh, yeah. Look at all the parts on this thing. Let's turn it over. Ah, there, there we go. Look, and it gives you uh, information on the uh, model there. There's a picture of the front of it. Real track model, so yeah. Um, I'm not going to read all this because we'll be here all day, but that's just a guide for the uh, loco. Something did fall out of the bag. What was it? Um, well, it's... Oh, I know. Yeah. What they are, they to replace the um, the couplings that it's got on already. To, these are the more realistic ones. They're not uh, working couplings. They're just aesthetic ones to make the model look a bit more realistic. So... I think we should uh, get to the model itself. So, here we go. This is the uh, the first car, so we'll just lift this off here. Gently move this up because we don't want to break anything, that's for sure. Oh, there we go. If we take it up, pop that out of shot. So this is the front car. First impressions is, well, wow, is all I can say. Just bring it a little bit closer. The detail on this is outstanding. Absolutely fantastic detail. I'll bring you the front there. There's a couple in just there which you can replace with those ones I just said. You got all the detail on all of, wow oh subtly fritted uh, actually they're metal yes the wipers are metal brilliant and you've got uh, car even the handles are separately fitted there as well look you got all these I don't know if they're rivets on these I don't know if they're old enough but there's all these you can feel them along the windows they are raised here then you got the suspension and all the detail underneath the uh, if you can just see it there, just there. Nice application of the Uriva livery there. I believe this is the dummy car. Let me just check. Yes, it is. God, that's un quite unusual how they've done the axle there. That's really quite nice. And I guess that's where the speaker goes if you want to put sound in it. I might. I don't know. So I'll uh, pop that one down onto the track just there and we shall open this one 
Right, if we just... Oh, I've just noticed something interesting. Um, on the last uh, thing I just uh, took out, this one, here, look, has a sleeve. Now, the other um, packaging for the this one here didn't. Um, well, I haven't opened this yet, so I'm not sure. It's just missing, I guess. Right, so we just pull the sleeve off again. Pop the engine down two seconds. Open it again and bring it. Oh, yeah, this is definitely the uh, motorized one. You can tell by the weight of it. Well, this is exactly the same as the a bit of paper there. Let me just get that off. Oh, it doesn't seem to. Oh, there we go. Exactly the same as the other unit, just with the motor in it. I think what I'll do now, we're going to get it onto the track so we can have another look at it uh, while it's on the track. We just pop that down there. Right, what I'm going to do is lower the camera so we can get a... If I just turn it and lower the camera right down to the... Uh, you can see the other Arriva trains wheels here. Might do a bit of a uh, comparison in a minute. Right. Now the coupling, I don't know if you can pick it up there. Electrical coupling, obviously. I'm not sure how on earth it works. Um, I think it just slots in. I hope it's nice and easy, because sometimes they really are not less. I guess you just press. Doesn't seem to want... Uh, Oh, this looks a little, little complicated. What I'm going to do is going to turn the camera off, and I'll be back two seconds once I have uh, coupled the two cars together. Right, we are now back. I've managed to uh, um, couple it up. It's quite a close couple in there, isn't it? It's really, really nice to see that. So now we can really get the detail here, it because. Uh, it's now on the track. If I go, just go underneath, you can see all this. Look at this. There's the radiator there, just for the engine. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic detail on this, guys. There's the. Uh, just go in there. Absolutely brilliant. All the detail around the windows. We've got the warning stickers on the doors. Not if the camera will focus there. We've got the hat, yellow handrails, the white ones on the outside. Here's the front of the engine. Fair play. I gotta hand it to Real Track Models. They've done an absolutely amazing job on this. We just keep going. Uh, got the exhaust there on both sides, obviously. And here's the other car. Let's see if it can get a zoom in on those. Yeah, not bad. You can just about. Uh... Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna have any problems with detail on this. This is definitely one of the better detailed models. The only problem I probably can see is the colour of the seats. If you just look at them, I go on these quite regularly and I, I know for sure they're not bright red. So I'm not sure quite why they've done that. I don't know. It's not too much of a bad thing, is it? Because I will be putting people in this. Well, why not, isn't it? Because it'll look really nice. Um, obviously this will have directional lighting. Um, it does have a destination. I don't know if you can quite see it there. Yes, this train is going to Aberdeen. And uh, the other side. If I just move the model along really carefully here. Let's see what it says at this end. I'm not too sure. Let's see if we can... Uh, Wow, that is amazing. This is actually going from Bridgend to Aberdeen. Wow, that's that's a really big coincidence as I actually live in Bridgend. And I have been on this service quite a few times. Not all the way up to Aberdeen unless you, you want to spend quite a few hours on it, but I'm not sure anybody would. Um, I use this service, it goes 
probably heard of it. Uh, from Bridge End, and it goes uh, not on the main line. It goes via uh, Cardiff Airport and Barry on the Vale of Glamorgan line. And I actually caught this service uh, yesterday when I bought this engine because uh, I went for a go down the beach at Lantwick Major, which this service goes through. That is a really good coincidence. Well done there, real track trains. I absolutely love that. So I'm really glad I bought this model. So I think the next thing to do is to get this, well, fantastic engine, if I'm honest, onto the track and see how it runs. I think that's the next thing. So, let's try and get this on the track. It shouldn't be too hard because it's only, as you know, four wheels on each coach. Right, if I just set the camera there, yeah, that'll do. I think I'll put the driving unit at the front. They tend to run better that way. Well, past experience then. Put it that way. Right. We'll put it on this track. i got to say, it does have good weight. And the good news is, those of you who had the Hornby version, um, that was only this wheel, uh, sorry, this wheel at the front, drove the whole unit. Now on this one, the motor is in this end and it drives both axles there, which is brilliant because any slight incline and the other one would have stopped. It must be a good or small motor because it's, they've kept all the seats and see-through windows. So it must be a really small motor in this area here. You know, this company has seemed to have gone quite to good uh, lengths to hide the motor, which is, well, it's a good start, isn't it? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move it back and forth and uh, see, see, what we go, see what we got here. Hmm, seems to run pretty well straight out of the box. Yes, it does. Move the camera again. Now, uh, this is uh, at the moment is DC. Uh, they are DCC ready, being a brand new local. Most are these days. So the lights will only run as you can probably just yeah. You can just see them as I turn the control. You can see them coming on. Um, and it does have red lights when it's going in the opposite direction. Um, another really good feature on this uh, model. I was planning to fit interior lights into each coach. But I don't have to. Because these actually come with interior lights already installed. Good. Really good real track trains. A lot of manufacturers need to do that. Uh, Bachman have done it with the Blue Pullman. And they've, yeah, they've just brought out, I think it's Bachman, yeah, brought out the first Great Western uh, 150 class, which also has interior lights. Uh, so it looks like uh, British manufacturers are going that way and putting lights in in the first place. Which is good, so we don't have to waste more money and time to fit them, which is good. So, I think we'll go and see this engine running around uh, the railway. In a few different spots, and I will uh, probably turn the uh, main lights off so we can see those interior lights. Oh, silly me, wrong way. Right, let's go.
Right, in, the ne in this next shot I'm going to turn the lights off so we can see the interior lights and the directional lighting. So here it is uh, coming round, so we can just see the interior lighting. If I just slow it down a bit, obviously the lights get dimmer, but it looks... But on a digital it would look much better. Well, uh, yeah, it re runs really good straight out of the box. Now here is the Hornby one which is really an old uh, tooling for it. Uh, it. Is there any comparison between this one and that one? Uh, no. None whatsoever. This one is a million times better than this. Although this does run pretty well. Seems to stay on the track. Decent motor on it, so it's okay. But this one is way, way better. So if we can go uh, back to the one we've been looking at today. Let's get a camera where I can... there we go. So, in conclusion then, do I like this model? Oh yeah, really brilliant engine. Uh, detail? 10 out of 10. An easy 10 out of 10 for this one. Because it's got the uh, all this detail under here, detail all across there. Um, my favourite feature has got to be the interior lights, which I wasn't expecting, and uh, the destination it's going, which is brilliant. I will be getting uh, this DCC fitted, obviously, so we can the, run, the lights will be on all the time. Um, I think the lights looked pretty good. I don't know if you thought they did, but they're not too bright and not too dim either, so pretty much perfect. And the directional lighting was pretty good uh, as well. It seemed to be a bit jerky straight out the box. A lot of the, um, well, the look was normally up. But it, after a couple of runs around the railway, it's fine. Um, it goes up banks and inclines quite well. Because I have quite a steep one on one side of the layout. And also it's on a sharp end, so it doesn't have any problems with that. Which is brilliant. A uh, pretty quiet motor. And it sticks to the track really well as well. So that's always, well, it's always a good thing, isn't it? Um, value for money? I don't know, I'd leave that up to you. They're uh, about £120, really. So, yeah, it's quite a lot of money. But you're paying for the awesome detail and the cool features this uh, model has. So I think that's uh, everything to say about this loco so just uh, drop a comment and see what you think of this um, Arriva Trains uh, logo as I said it's a new manufacturer to the layout so it's a first for me um, if they bring out any more model uh, locos I would definitely be buying them because if they're any as good as this one you know the great detail that's on this I'll be happy so you will be seeing this running around the layout in probably the more modern um, running galas, which will happen more often as the uh, layout uh, gets, well, looks nicer, which I have been doing work on it today, which is, you'll be happy to know. So guys, I think that's the end of the video. I've got nothing else to say about this. So, um, thanks for watching the video. As I said, leave a comment to see what you think, and uh, I hope I will get back to all the comments but it's starting to get a bit harder now because I'm getting more and more comments on my videos. So that's it for now guys. The next video will be a look at the first Great Western HST because I now have all eight coaches and it seems to be quite popular when it runs in my running galas. So that will be the next video up as soon as possible. Thanks guys, that's the end. Talk to you again soon.